my loves, and welcome back to Bloodboon. Welcome back to the Hunter's Nightmare. There are a few things that we need to uh, be getting. Oh, hello. Hello. Oh, look, we've got an ally here. We've got an ally who has a particular transformation on. That is the uh, kin transformation that turns us into a kind of living cauliflower. I'll show you that a little later. The reason I've got an ally is because there's some uh, loose ends to tie up. One of which is this guy, Lawrence, the first vicar. There's some contention in Bloodborne as to who is the harder boss, Lawrence or Ludwig. They're very hard in different ways. Uh, Ludwig is hard because he doesn't really have any set pattern, certainly not in his first phase, so he's rather difficult to predict. Lawrence is hard because he does have very, very, very set patterns, a very limited move set, but... He hits like a dump truck. He hits possibly harder than almost any boss in the game. If he catches you in a particular combo, he just slaughters you. So, I don't know. I mean, we're in New Game Plus, so I'm tempted to say this guy's harder, actually. Which is why I have no problem summoning in allies for this one. He's also beautiful, is he not? Same model as the Cleric Beast and others, like uh, similar model to Vicar Amelia. It seems as though most of the church, certainly the white church hunters, become this particular kind of beast. But Lawrence is particularly tormented and bestial because, of course, he is the creator of the healing church. Alongside Ludwig, he is the one who uh, established uh, blood healing. He is the one who's responsible for pretty much all of this. He is the one we saw in that animatic after we defeated Vicar Amelia, who broke with Bergenworth uh, and left to establish the Healing Church. This is what's become of him. He's found himself in the Hunter's Nightmare as a mindless monster, which is fantastic, isn't it? Something that is perpetually aflame, that is self-sacrificing. Um, and that is mad with its own pain and regret. Kind of love it. Kind of love it. It's the capstone on the history and the legacy of the Healing Church, really, isn't it? I'm assuming since that uh, that player has... Oh, they're dead. Damn, that's not good. That player had the um, kin transformation on. So I'm assuming that they were going for a massive arcane build. Because that's what you do with the kin transformation. You go for all of the arcane attacks because it enhances them like you wouldn't believe. And it also gives you a really weird... Um, oh, fuck. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do this on my own! It gives you some really weird melee options. Your entire moveset changes when you get the kin transformation. I'll show you how to do that later. It's kind of obscure. It's very difficult to actually... Ah, God damn it! Oh, no, we managed it. We got away. That's good. God, this fight. This fight's entirely optional. But if you really want to understand... Oh my god. If you really want to understand the horror of the backstory of Bloodborne, I would advise doing it. Oh, he killed me. He killed me to death. Well, let's give that one another go, shall we? Because Lawrence is one of those characters where you really do need to understand where he comes from in order to understand the Healing Church. Oh, he's got the, um, it's one of the blood weapons. Oh, it's so good, that thing. Look at it. Look at it. This is going to be good. That's going to be amazing against uh, Lawrence. I love the title. Lawrence the First Vicar. That's so evocative, isn't it? Oh god, don't get too close to him, not when he's doing that. That's another thing, he's got so many AoE attacks, um, Lawrence. Most of his attacks sweep around like that, or they explode out. So he's very, very difficult to get close to without risking damage. And if he does any damage, the likelihood is he's going to catch you and kill you. This really is the kind of fight where you need to learn how he works. You just need to watch his moves and anticipate everything he does. God, our, our ally there is doing mega damage against him. Mega damage. He's also very tanky, Lawrence. He takes a lot of killing. He's got three phases. 
uh, all of which come with their own challenges. He can be staggered, but it's very, very, very hard to do. I mean, I know players who can do this without allies, and you know what? All the best to them. I have no idea how you do it without an ally providing distraction. I've tried, believe me. I've tried many times with this boss, and I just can't do it on my own, so... There we are. I mean, technically, you fight him just like you fight the Cleric Beast, the, the first boss in the game. But unlike the first boss in the game, this guy will kill you in one set of hits. In one combo. He's very useful, isn't he? I love the fact that he's perpetually aflame, that his skull is open and there's fire inside. He's just a tormented character, you know? And since we have seen what he created, we've seen the legacy of the Healing Church and the history of the Healing Church, it's no wonder, it's little wonder, the author of every horror in Yharnam is this guy, technically. I mean, to be 100% fair to him, Bergenworth didn't exactly cover itself in glory either, did it, with its explorations. So, without this guy and his schism from Bergenworth, the creation of the Healing Church, then there would have been another set of horrors. Oh, oh his legs are gone. Now he's going to crawl around spewing lava all over the place. This is a really weird phase of the fight, and very tricky. Very tricky, because he makes a lot of the floor impassable. So some sort of ranged weapon at this point is often very good. The uh, Beast Cutter in its long form is excellent here, because you can get caught in what he spills very easily. And the fact is, you just don't get much chance to practice this this phase of the fight, because you don't get to it very often, so it's tough, this one. It's very tough. Oh, look at him. <laughs> He's so cool. What a brilliant boss. Very hard to fight. Oh, he's going to spew. He's going to vomit. <sighs> Lovely. He reminds me a bit of certain bosses from Dark Souls 2. Like the Smelter Demon. Uh, and the... What's the... Is it the King of the Iron Keep? Or the Old Iron King? The big fire demon? There's, there's something very redolent of both of them here. Oh, he's nearly done. We haven't got much. He's nearly done. My god, is he tough. Oh, here he comes. <laughs> Throwing his temper tantrum. Oh. You need to keep on one particular side of him, and that helps. Oh, oh he's dead. He's gone. That's it. That's Lawrence the First Vicar, my loves. Very cool indeed. I don't know what he gives you away. I think you get the beast rune from him. Which allows you to become a beast. That allows you... You equip the beast rune and the beast cut... Not the beast cutter. The, the claw weapon. The beast claw weapon. And you become a beast. You actually become a monster. It's one of the transformations in the game. Which is kind of cool. Changes your entire moveset. No other weapon or combination has that moveset. It's very strange. Very peculiar. Um... Right, we were, we just defeated um, Maria of the Astral Clock Tower, and now we could discover what the mystery of the Clock Tower actually was by using this, which is the Astral Clock piece that we got from defeating Maria. Now all the runes change and shift. And the one it settles on is one of the water runes, one of the uh, Great Lake runes. Which makes sense. There we are. And now, we have a gate through to the next section. But of course, this was a tower, if you remember, and there was nothing beyond this point but a drop. However, when we walk out... Oh. Oh. This is different, but if you look down, you can see the Hunter's Nightmare and Yharnam. 
in the water. This is another layer of the nightmare, another layer of dreaming. It's the one that Bergenworth discovered during its metaphysical explorations and what eventually led to the formulation of uh, the Healing Church. This is where they found the great sea of being, the sea of dreaming that connects all states of being together uh, within this metaphysics. And it's where the great ones come from. Ah, listen. This is atonement for the wretches. Ah. This is one of the residents of the fishing hamlet. What it suggests is that Bergenworth It suggests that Bergenworth and the Healing Church, the Hunters, came here. They somehow managed through their metaphysical explorations to find this place. And they slaughtered the inhabitants. They, wrought, they conducted hideous experiments upon them, which twisted and transformed them. And eventually, they did something else as well. Something beyond hideous, and you'll see for why. There's that rune, look. The corpse is in the shape of the hanging rune. Very peculiar. But this is essentially Innsmouth. It's Bloodborne's little homage, one of many homages to H.P. Lovecraft. It's a bit more extreme than Innsmouth is. It's almost like what Innsmouth would eventually become if it were left to its own devices. But it's, it's a village of fish people. It's a village of fish people. Whether they became fish people because of their proximity to the Great Ones and to the um, the Sea of Being, or whether it's because of the experiments of Bergenworth that were performed upon them that twisted and mutated them, it's hard to say. But they are very, very twisted and very, very mutated indeed. And also tormented. There's a suggestion there used to be a people of a kind once upon a time before Bergenworth came here. And we know also that it wasn't just Bergenworth that came here. It was a, a, a sort of combination effort from Bergenworth, the Healing Church and the various different schools of uh, hunters, the various different workshops. Uh, we know, for example, that Lawrence and Ludwig came here alongside um, Bergenworth, and so did um, uh, German. So did German. German was definitely here. Ugh, look, the worms, the glowing worms on the bodies. It's, uh, uh. There's so much environmental detail here and storytelling, it's beautiful. It's like the sea is encroaching with... It's not just the ocean, it's like the rot that the ocean brings. It's a metaphysical rot. It's brilliant. It's absolutely beautiful. And now there's nothing left here. There's only pain, there's only suffering and regret. But there's also a suggestion that... The, those who conducted the, their investigations here, those who inflicted their atrocities on these people, were cursed. They invited the curse down upon themselves, which is why so few hunters escape the dream. The dream itself is tainted. And it's all because of what they did here. They did something to the metaphysics of this universe that is unconscionable. You'll see. You'll see for yourself, but it, it is hideous. And it's what all those hunters before, all those characters through the hunter's nightmare, Ludwig himself, of course, are trying to stop us from reaching. They don't want anyone to see it, because it's so shameful what they did. It's so shameful. And we, of course, are going to delve and uh, unlock it. We're going to go see what they did for ourselves. It's not good. It is not good. I love that notion that behind the healing church, behind Bergenworth, behind all of their scholarly and religious high-flung ideals of 
transcendence and so on and so forth. There is this foundation of murder and brutality and atrocity. I mean, it's it's very true to life, you know. I mean, you look at institutions like the Catholic Church, for example, and historically its roots are in blood and torture and very little else, you know. Oh god, there's so many of them. This fishing village is so difficult when you first come here. I died so many times just trying to get through it, but I've played it so many times now that I know exactly in what order to do everything. You know, and there is there is no set order in which to do things, but there is an easier order in which to do things. You take out all of the little fish people first, especially the ones who are going to throw explosive shit at you from afar. And then you deal with the bigger enemies. That's the way to do it. I mean, fortunately, we've got a very, a very trusty weapon on our hands here, into, uh, uh, in the form of the Moonlight Blade, which is fantastic. It's fantastic for this area. Okay, these two we might be able to get without arousing too much. Yeah, easy peasy. There we go. I just love the fact that the fishmen have forks. <laughs> I don't know why that makes me smile, but it does. There's a very large fish person over there. Can you see the giant one? He's tough. That guy's a tough one. Which is why we're going to try and open the shortcut. Before we have a go at him. Just to make things easier on ourselves. Because uh, dying here would be frustrating. Of course, it's fair to say they have no great love for the hunters either. Because, of course, the hunters did this to them. Now, can we get him from here, I wonder? We may be able to just blat him a bit, you know, with some long-range stuff. Ooh, I know what we can do. I know what we can do. Have I got any... I do. I've got one Molotov. He's standing right next to the explosion, explosive barrels. Let's see. Oh, that did it. Took away a little bit of his health. Not much, but a little bit. Oh, enough! Certainly enough. Yeah, these things are tough. They're tough to fight. Especially with other enemies around. Look at the coral going out of his back. So cool. Tougher than most bosses those things are if you don't have some tricks up your sleeve. Very good sources of blood echoes though. This is a high level area, basically. You need, um, you need your wits about you for this area. There are areas where, like here, look, where they rise out of the sludge. And you just have to deal with them as and how you can. I love the pall of rain everywhere, the grimness of it. I think it's just stunning. Just a vile swamp, a fetid place. Absolutely fetid. I love it. Okay, right. I've got many blood echoes. I could do, really, with going back to the uh, bonfire. The bonfire? No, ah, that's Dark Souls. That's Dark Souls. No, what am I talking about? The lantern. You see the one up there? He's going to drop down and then hack us to bits with that uh, machete thing. He's got. Ah, he's got us. God damn it. Watch. Watch his animation. <laughs> Oh, look at the face. It's pretty much all coral. They can kill you very quickly, those butcher guys. Look at him. He's hacking at a corpse, that one. Yeah. Lovely. And it's a hunter's corpse, I believe, as well. Goodbye. Oh, we got the harrowed set. That's uh, Simon's set. You know, Simon, who we met at the beginning of the Hunter's Nightmare? That's his armor basically. The rags and whatnot. It's very good. It's very good. It's got I think it's got high arcane defense, if I remember correctly. It looks good, too. Okay. Right, we can move on now, I think, to the next section, which is a, a tough one. It's a really tough one. There's a much tougher of the fish giant. In fact, no, 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 no. Let me show you what's down the well first. I am not, repeat, not going to fight what's down here. Not a chance. 
Oh, can you hear that? There's a winter lantern. Mm, seems alright. Except... Oh, look behind me. <gasps> yeah. There's one on the ceiling there. He will drop down. Oh, look. There's like... Uh, like aquatic worm things everywhere. Ugh. And there's another one too. Who's already at large. There's a giant with a... Uh, he's carrying a giant anchor around with him. And these guys are... This is one of the toughest fights in the whole game. Which is why I'm not going to do it. You can get from this fight the... Um, it's one of the blood blades. But I already got it in my last playthrough. So I'm not going to do it now. <laughs> God, you hear that? He's shake they're shaking the place. Oh, where did you come from? I thought I killed all of you. Apparently not. There you go. Oh, listen to that. They're still fighting. Yes, you look at this guy. He's got spears stuck in his back. And he would pull them out and chuck them at me. Down he goes. This is tough. There are a lot of long-range enemies here. And there are fish dogs. These things. They've got a moveset that's not unlike the dogs from Yarnum. But they're much tougher, much faster, and take off a lot more health. They are not good. There we go. Excellent. You've got to be very methodical in this area. Because it's very easy to get overwhelmed. There's a lot, a lot to fight here. A lot of enemies that have incredible rage to them. Backed up by quite powerful melee enemies. So it's a bad, it's a bad time all around, really. But there is another lantern just up there, if I can get by. If I can make it past. There's also another one of those shaman characters up here who casts arcane shenanigans at you. Gotcha. Right, for this one, we're just going to have to run, I think. Might be best just to run, because there he is. You see the arcane guy? They're very easy to take down. Very easy to take down. All you need to do is hit them. Like, so, uh, he's dead. Oh, no, there's another giant with an anchor. We're going to run away from him because he's tough. And we're going to activate the lantern. Yay. There we go. Wonderful. Okay, so this is going to be our base camp for where we delve deeper. Deeper. De this is basically the last section of the game. As you can see, look, there's the lower area of the fishing hamlet, and there's the diseased sun. Ugh. Can you hear the bell? Did you hear that? The chime? That's the bell that Brago was talking about. You know when he asked us, um, do you hear the bell? That's what he was talking about. Okay. Right, I'll come back to talk to Simon later, don't worry. I'll talk to him in a moment. Right, now, we could waste time trying to kill this guy. It takes a lot of doing and is a bit of a pain in the ass, quite frankly. So, I'm not gonna. Oh, look. A single gravestone and a single flower. <laughs> Woeful elderly, that's right. And down here, can you see what's down there in the bay? Something beached up and something huge. That's what the hunters did. That's what the healing church did. That's what Bergenworth did. Bear in mind that whatever gets beached up here is going to be far more. Ah, there's the bell. Far more than just a beached whale or shark or something. It's not a sea that's populated by normal marine life. It's the sea of dreams. It's the sea of abstraction. Great ones swim it. So this is... It's Brager, technically, but it's not. It's a it's a phantom of Brager that he summons with his uh, bell, with his magic bell. And it is protecting the secrets of Bergenworth from intruders. That's what his entire imperative. And as long as the real Brager is alive in his cell, he can keep summoning this creature, no matter how many times we defeat it. So, we're going to have to get the key and go down and defeat Brega himself at some point to stop this phantom getting in our way. It's kind of difficult to, to figure out initially 
because there's nothing that really tells you that this that is what is happening. Fortunately, the um, the tendrils of Ebrietas there, the auger of Ebrietas, makes this fight pretty trivial. Otherwise, it's quite hard. He can he can block your attacks. He can repost your attacks, which is a pain. All right, I'm just going to put some distance between us because what I need is some bullets. I need some bullets so I can use the auger, and then I can I can really deal with him. There's three fights with him, but we don't have to do them all. Each of the phantoms you defeat, you get a different part of his armor, which is kind of cool. He's dead. We got him. We got this part of him anyway. That'll probably. I think we've already got the set though, so it probably won't give us anything. Oh no, there we are. We got the armbands from that one. The blooded armbands. Nice. Okay, so that thing will appear twice more. I do believe. I'm not going to fight them all. There's no point because I've already got most of what I need from here. The rest of this area is just like a... It's a wander through this twisted little hamlet. It's just getting items and things. Getting rid of these priests is paramount. Because they can control the weather. They can actually bring lightning down. Which is rather problematic for us. Got loads of blood echoes. My god. Loads of blood echoes. I suppose I should go and spend them at some point. Shouldn't I? Hmm... For safety's sake. Otherwise I might lose them. Who knows? I love the detail in this area. Like the 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 seaborne rot. The way the wood is all moulded and oxidised. And there are limpets and all sorts clinging to it. It's absolutely brilliant. I love it. Hear the bell again? I think the next Brager is down in actually in the water. I've got coffee by the way. Look at the ships. Look at the ships that are protruding through. I don't know what that suggests. But we saw them, if you remember, we saw the masts of them in the Nightmare Frontier protruding up. That's because the Nightmare Frontier, the Nightmare of Mensis, and this area, the Hunter's Nightmare, are all linked. In fact, all of the various areas of dreaming are linked together by the sea. It's what I believe is referred to in Dark Souls 3 when there's talk of the deep. There's no official uh, ratification for that, but it's what I certainly believe. It seems to be a metaphysics that links everything together. Aha! Gotcha. Ew, they bleed foulness, these things. There's a patrol down there that's particularly difficult to take down. It's full of um, fish people and... Ah, um, oh, if I could just blast those explosive barrels, it would knock them all down. don't think I've got anything to do it with there. Uh, that's not going to work because that goes behind you, so that's no good. Hmm. It would be a good way of taking all them down, but uh, I don't think I have it in me, unfortunately. Now, you see him scurrying off the edge? Right into the middle of all those explosive barrels. So you can guess what's going to happen, can't you? There we go. But we managed to avoid it. And we got a bloodstone chunk, so... Yeah. I, I feel really bad for killing these guys. They've already been through hell once when Bergenworth came. Oh my god! This is... this is, That was not clever. That was not clever. This is a big... Look at how many of them there are! Oh my god! Oh shit. No! Ah! Ah! Well, that went well. That went very well indeed. Right, I'll get back there. <laughs> uh, no worries, my loves. Not a problem. Okay, before we go back... Before we go back to that area of the fishing hamlet, there's a few things I need to do. A few loose ends. Do you remember? Aha! Now that that may have been mean, but she gives us brain fluid, and then she resurrects, and then we can give her the brain fluid. Oh, hello. Hello. One last time, will you fetch brain from Murky? The yes, yes, yes. We'll give you brain please. fluid. I want... Give brain fluid. Uh... Ugh. 
Ah, oh, the sound. A shape. My guide, I see your voice. Clearly as it bends and bleeds. Milkweed room. That's what we want. Revelation. Just for me. <laughs> Thank you. For everything. Really. I used to be nothing. <gasps> And then she deflates one last time and passes on to some other condition. There we go. That's her done. Now, if we go back to the the hunter's the hunter's dream, I can show you how to use the milkweed rune and the parasite of Kos to um to create the uh kin transformation the parasite of course is something you only get after you've defeated the game once uh you get it from the last boss of the hunter's nightmare dlc uh so you need to have gone through the game at least twice to get this transformation it's really weird it's very very peculiar indeed but it does give you something very interesting here we go so you put on this uh, the milkweed rune there we go. There we are. That transforms us into this cauliflower looking thing. Uh, and then you need to put on... You don't have to, but to make the most of it, you put on as a, your weapon the Parasite of Kos. And suddenly... Let me transform. Let me get it. Here we go. Okay. So now we can do this. We've got tendrils that inflict arcane damage. We can also do this weird arcane attack. It's very weird, isn't it? I like this a lot. Look at this. That is a very, very cool arcane attack we can do. That does phenomenal damage to, uh, certainly to enemies that, um, are, that have, uh, vulnerability to arcane. Okay. Uh, right, I am not going to keep this on because it is, it's one of those transformations that is really fun, changes up the game dramatically, but it does make it very, very difficult, um, because you need to relearn everything. I sense the ancient echoes. Blah, 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 blah. You need to relearn how to play the game with this, um, this transformation because it changes your moveset completely. Everything is different, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go and put on another another rune. It's also kind of distracting. The the um, the cauliflower thing is kind of distracting. So I'm gonna go for I think uh, the corruption vile blood oath because I like that one. Yeah, I like that one. I like being a vampire. What can I say? Maybe the hunter one. Uh, there we go. There we are. That's much better. I'm not fond of being a cauliflower. Well, I don't know. I'm sure it has its charms. In fact, there is another thing that happens. I should show you it, really. If you go back to the beginning of the fishing hamlet with the cauliflower transformation on and talk to that guy who was slumping around, um, it actually changes his dialogue. Now, there are a few other things we need to do. Let's go back to the cathedral ward. There are a few loose ends we still need to, uh, we need to take care of. Just one or two little things. Hang on, I got my wire caught there. Now, oh, what is it we're doing? There isn't much left. There are a few... Um, oh, yeah, we need to go find Alfred. We need to go and find Alfred. Because if you remember, we got the Canehurst summons letter when we the when we defeated Marta Lagarius. We found it in um, the Queen's chambers. We can give him the Canehurst summons, which will mean that he can get to Canehurst. And of course, he he hates Kanehurst. He hates the vile blood. So that should prove intriguing. And this is the Amygdalan arm, by the way. It's one of my favourite weapons. I actually went through the game once with the Amygdalan arm as my principal weapon. It was loads of fun. Get out of my way, you! I have no time for you now. Uh, it's essentially, it's what it, it's what it says on the turn. It's the arm of an amygdala. 
and it's still alive. Right, here's Alfred. Oh, oh. Good to see you safe. I wish I could say now, the same. Let's think up something to discuss. Oh yeah, why Just not? Tell me what piques your interest. Why not? You know, let's think of something to discuss here in Yarnum. Is that? Sigil of Canehurst. It is indeed. I've heard tell of Canehurst nobles and their amusingly pompous invitations. Oh dear. Wonderful. I thank you profusely. Profusely, I no will less. Depart immediately, but first, a token of my gratitude. What does he give you? I can't remember. I think I'm sure. I feel my master's hand at work. I'm sure you don't. Praise the good blood. I killed your master. I killed him good. These tarnished streets. This is the beginning of Alfred sort of going a little bit off the deep end. It has been. Let us cleanse the and may the good blood. Yeah, he he really goes off the deep end now. Now we need to go back to Kanehurst to see what he gets up to. The. Hello, you. Out of my way! Oh yeah. As you can see, it's quite good. It's a very heavy weapon. It does a lot of damage. In this form, it's brilliant. It's got a massive reach, because that clawed talon kind of whips out and does enormous damage. It's very good. Right, okay. Let's deal with you too. Oh, she got me. Ew, that's gross. That is gross. Well, that is a real one-two punch, isn't it? Right, you. Oh, oh. Out of it. There we go. Gotcha. I do love that weapon. Look at it. Look at it. It's so gross. The Amygdalan arm. Love it. I won't be using it for the rest of the way, but it's pretty good. Certainly one of those weapons I always upgrade to its maximum state. Right. Off to Kanehurst we go. Yeah, let's get the Moonlight Sword back on. It's always going to be our default weapon from this point on because it is so good. I mean, it's it's good even without it being upgraded. Now it's upgraded to its ultimate state. It is amazing. Okay, right. To Kanehurst we go! Just to watch Alfred um, losing his shit. Yeah. All mangled and twisted with every inside on the outside for all the world to see. <laughs> yeah. So that's what he did to Annalise. <laughs> She's still alive. If you look, it's still moving. She can't die. So we've got the queenly flesh. Uh, Annalise is a vile blood. She can't die. Look at him. He's just covered in it. It is indeed. Look at this. Thanks to you, I've done it. Well, isn't it wonderful? Now Master can be canonized as a true martyr. Uh. <laughs> I've done it. I have. Yeah. <laughs> the character who seems the most reasonable when you meet him goes right off the deep end. And uh, we're going to kill him. Because it's fun. Uh, yeah, that's it. It's not that you are clearly mad and really need taking down. That wheel he's got, by the way, is... Um, I've never used it, but it's a pretty good weapon. It does arcane damage, if I remember correctly. It's got like a, like a, a spell-casting quality to it. Oh yeah, the blood's gone to my head, not to yours. Look at that. 
You see the arcane stuff around it? It's so cool. Never used it myself. That is one weapon I have never, ever gotten used to. Um, but apparently it's very good. If you can upgrade it, it's, it's excellent. Once again, a hunter fight that the Organ of Ebrietas makes entirely trivial. Oh god, he got me. Yeah. I mean, he is ostensibly quite tough, but with the Auger, not. <laughs> not at all. Oh, but he does heal, though. He does actually have healing blood on him, which is annoying. He can also stagger you for mega damage, which is not good. But with the Auger in full flow, he can't even get near you, so... You know, who cares? Oh, you bastard, he's done it again. Oh god, he really staggered me there. Oh, he knocked my, my attack back, that's pretty cool. And again, wow! There's the defensive quality to the wheel there, that's kind of cool. I've never seen that before. Oh, got him. Oh, got him. There we go. A few more of them and he'll be done. I can just keep him at arm's length, you know? It's the easiest way to do it. But we're making a mess of Annalise's chamber here. Which is a shame. I mean, I like the architecture and the decor of Kanehurst very much. Gotcha! I think when you defeat him for the first time, he gives you the means of purchasing all this equipment he's got. He gives you the badge that unlocks this stuff in the shop. The wheel, uh, the martyr's wheel and all that kind of thing. He won't give it as this time, because we've already got it. So, um, yep, yeah, he's done. Bye! Master Ligarius, in my stead. <laughs> oh, we got a blood drag. Yay! And we got some madman's knowledge. Okay, we can offer that up to Annalise. I'm sure she'll be uh, pleased with that. When we get her back, that is. Now, what we need to do, we need to do... Do you remember when we defeated Ebrietas in the Upper Cathedral Ward? There was this curious thing called the Altar of Despair. That thing that looked like Rom, the vacuous spider in a fossilized state. We need to take her flesh to that. And it will reverse time for her and resurrect her. There we go. Offer flesh to Altar. Uh, time flows in reverse for this scrap of flesh. Okie dokie. So now if we go back to Kanehurst, she'll be back. And uh, ready to resume, as Alfred put it, causing mischief. Which is what uh, the Kanehurst nobles do, of course. It's what we're going to do, because we are also a Kanehurst noble, technically, at this point. There she is! Yay! Oh yes, sorry. You can't talk directly to her. You've got to kneel. You've got to kneel before her, otherwise she will not talk to you. She finds it all rather offensive, so we've got to, yeah, we've got to kneel. Dearie me. Thank you. What is thy wish? Offer blood drag, yeah, why not? I don't know what it does. Good. Let this reward be thine. Yay! Indulge thyself in our tainted blood. Oh, that's a reward, is it? Mm, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Delicious, I'm sure. Okay, I think that's it for Annalise now. We await thy return. And for Ligarius and Alfred and whatnot. Yeah, they just remain here. I mean, she is the last, apart from ours, she is the last of the vile blood. So she sustains. She just carries on in the dream, you know? In her own little corner of it here in Kanehurst. If ever there is a sequel or a spin-off, they could really, like, build on Kanehurst as the centre or focus of it. That'd be kind of fun. That would be fun. So what else do we need to do? What do we need to do? Okay, so we're back in the fishing hamlet. Innsmouth in all that name. And there's stuff to do, that's for damn sure. 
Okay. Ah, arcane, arcane shenanigans. Not good. Die, you! Ah. Oh, God. The big one will uh, have noticed that. That's for sure. I suppose we should go through and... Uh, ah, Brager's Phantom will be back. Yeah, there she is. I said she, of course. Yeah, because it's not just like a random great one or monster, that thing. It's something very specific. Very specific. Okay, we've got to defeat the, the Phantom again. All right, you. Uh-oh. As I say, most of the hunter battles are rendered trivial by the auger. There's really not much to them. I mean, he's tougher than most, but not that tough. He's got some defensive capabilities that are unusual. But that's about it. As long as your character's relatively uh, well equipped and you know what you're doing, yeah, that tough. He's certainly nowhere near as tough as the likes of Alfred or um, the Crow, for example. Neither the Crow of Kanehurst nor Eileen the Crow. So, yeah, he's alright. As protectors of the, the secrets of the Healing Church go. Not up to much, really. And you can't... I mean, he's worth a ton of Blood Echo. So, you can technically just keep reloading, going and coming back, and taking him out. And you'll get a ton of Blood Echoes from it. Righty-ho. I'm going to go and open the shortcut. I believe it's through here. I mean, there is a lot to explore down there. Um, but... I want to open the shortcuts first because that will make things marginally easier. I mean, this is almost like... I don't know how you describe it. It's almost like a, a nursery. It's a nursery where they're cultivating young. If you look down, like all the way down, there is just this carpet of... of, like, wormy things which seem to be children. Look, there they are. Masses of them. Not nice. Not nice. Hello, you. I love the voices. The sort of... It's horrible. It's gross, but I love it. There's the bell again. Because we have yet to deal with a Brega. We will, though. What you need to do is go and talk to Simon at the Lantern. And he will give you the key to Brager's cell. We'll do that. We will do that in a, a little while. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, now this is tough. There are two of those lightning calling priests. And they can call it down right on top of you, look. But under here, under this awning, we're safe from it. So as long as we stay under here, we're all right. So it's best to take out the melee protectors first and then go after the, the priests. That's the best way to do it. There's two of them, though, so it is tough. You are going to take damage. So you need to be really careful here because they can kill you really quickly. As you can see, I nearly got myself killed there. Gotcha. God, these guys give uh, loads of good stuff. Again, another area if you want to level up. Pretty good. Pretty damn good. There we go. I love the priests with their, their stretched sort of conical heads. I think that's really cool. Ooh. What are they doing? Cultivating the worms and eggs and things. Like, Not nice. Oh. Once again, we are the agent of doom. We are the bad guy here. We came into their world, you know? And they're only here because of the sins of the hunters anyway. I mean, that's what the nightmare is. That's what this place is. It's suspended here by the sins of the hunters. There we are. This is the, the shortcut back.
to where Simon is awaiting for us. Okay, right. Before we do that, though, there's stuff to explore. There's definitely stuff to explore down here. Oh, can you hear it? The bell. You know what that uh, indicates? Don't we? It gets progressively harder the deeper down you go, obviously. Ugh. Oh, the eggs. Ugh. And they hatch into these wormy things, it seems. And do you remember the snail creature that fell in the lower section of the nightmare? Well, this is where it came from. Look, here they are. Some sort of mollusk women. It's like... Ugh. These guys are tough as well. They may not look it, but they are, they are properly tough. And they can kill you very quickly. If you're not careful. They're slow. But they've got some incredible attacks, these guys. You do not want to underestimate them. The animation on them is great, too. That sort of boneless, like, mucal quality that they've got. It's fantastic. Also, it's very difficult to tell which shells are empty and which aren't. The only way is to just hit them and find out. A lot to explore down here. A lot to explore. Oh god. So many. Just take them down. You know, that's the easiest thing you can do. Clear your path. Don't wait for them to wake up. I mean, most of them are empty, if I remember correctly. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, no. That is such a gross attack. Ugh. I mean, we technically don't even need that because I've already got it. Whatever it is, I'll have got it on my previous playthrough. But I want to show you what's here, so... Let's have a look. Oh, my God. Don't have to fight them. No point. They can't follow you over here anyway, so... No point in fighting them. Okay. Okay, here we go again. Gotcha. Bloodstone chunk. Very good. Upgrading my weapons. Not that I need to at this point. I mean, there isn't much else to do. It really is just getting through to the final encounter now. We're very close. This is pretty much the last section of the Hunter's Nightmare. We're deep into it now. This is what they didn't want us to see. This fishing hamlet and what was done here. Okay, these tunnels are lethal. They're full of some of the nastiest enemies in the game. Um, these snail women aren't too bad. They're, they're tough in number, but they're not too bad. But there's some real nasties down here. Real nasties. Including the last form of... Uh, the last Phantom of Breaker. Ah! God. That we're coming close to now. There's another one of those priests up there that's going to call down arcane shenanigans upon my head. Don't want that. Oh, there's the bell. We are close. We are very close. Now, of course, we can see where it's going to trigger. It'll trigger up here. We'll get the item, and then it'll trigger. Lead elixir. I, I, what does that do, the lead elixir? I don't really know. This is actually a tough place to fight in, though, because it's so small. You know, it's contained, so it's difficult to dodge around him. And he has the upper hand with that weapon. That's for damn sure. Okay, so let's not fight him, though. Let's uh, change it up a little bit, yeah? Come on. Same tactic as before. We're just going to use the organ to take him down. Got to be careful, though, because he can dodge through it. Gotcha. If I can stagger him with it, then all to the good. That will give us some lovely viscerals. Some really cool visceral attacks. Ooh. Knocking him back. It's all good. 
it's borderline unfair against hunters, the Organ of Embietas. It makes them so pathetically trivial. Should have thought to use it against Gascoigne, actually. It would have been good against it. It's because it has such range, and its effect lasts. It lingers on the screen. So they can actually hurl themselves into it, which is pretty good, you know? Must remember to use it uh, a little later on against a particular, a particular encounter. That isn't a hunter, but has a hunter-like moveset. Oh, oh God. Dear me. <laughs> oh, that's a very good weapon he's using. It's the... What's it called? The blood something? I can't remember what. But it's very good. Uh, you use uh, you use up health to enhance its damage. It's a blood weapon. Oh, that's that. Phantom down. There we go. Wonderful. Now, if we come out here... And we look down. You'll see how close we are. <gasps> look! We're very close now. You can see a little bit more detail of the creature that's washed up. Mmm. Interesting, eh? Interesting. Okay. Now there should be somewhere. Let's get rid of these guys because otherwise we're going to get blatted. Yeah, he's down. That can kill you so quickly it's unbelievable. It really can. This whole area, this fight is awkward. It's very tricky. You have to be very aware of it going in. And you need to take down the arcane guy first. Otherwise, he will just kill you stone dead. Okay. Let's get what was left behind. Delicious. Lots of stuff. God, we're getting loads of gems to upgrade with. That's nice. There are other areas to explore around here. Um, some of them very dangerous. Ah, here we are. We're very close. We're very close to where we want to be now. Being down there. Yeah, I think this is pretty much it. Oh, very close. Down there, down that tunnel to the right is the final boss of the Hunter's Nightmare. Uh, there's this pit. I think there's something down there. Should we go and have a look? There is a ladder, so let's just go and... Oh, can you hear that? That's a winter lantern. There are winter lanterns down here, and they are tough. Hello. Oh. Oh, it's a pit of something awful. There. Not nice. Not nice at all, my loves. Okay. Right. We'll explore where the winter lanterns are a little later. What I'm going to do... Let's get this here. Oh, can you see? They're not going to attack us, those ones. Um, they're going to leave us alone. They are busy worshipping or mourning or something. I don't know. Um, I'm going to activate this shortcut. And then I'm going to go speak to Simon. Because Simon will give us the means of dealing with Braegar permanently. Which is useful. And that's going to be one of the last story arcs we, we, we wrap up. Before we face the final boss. Well, the final boss of the, the Hunter's Nightmare. And then the final boss of the game after. Who, by the way, after we've done the Hunter's Nightmare, the final boss of the main game is going to be pretty trivial. There we go, the last shortcut. And where is Simon? Where is Simon? He's over here. He's slumped. Over here. Who are you? I'm afraid I've made a bunch of things. You kind of have, man. Oh, I can hear the bell now. Oh, yes. The beast hide assassin. He's after me. He is that. Again. And again. Oh dear. It never ends. No, it's the same cycles. Over and over and over and over for you, I'm afraid. So he's going to die. I need you to do something. This village is the true secret. Mm-hmm. Testament to the old sin. Oh, yes it is. It feeds this... Hunter's nightmare. It is the nightmare, technically. Please bring to an end the horror. Oh, I will. Worry ye not, I will. Sin. We hunters cannot bear their weight forever. It's true, it's true. The sins of the fathers, eh? When we come back, my loves, we'll find out exactly what those sins are. Until then, my dears, 
Bye bye. And bye bye to Simon too.